Hey everyone, I wanted to, uh, wanted to make a little compilation video here going over um, the rocket mass heater that I have here in the grow house. This grow house is a 12 by 8 by about 7.5 feet uh, tall uh, hoop house. It's made from cattle panel, there's three of them, and some just basic 2x6s, 2x4s, uh, um, greenhouse plastic, staples, you know other miscellaneous stuff so nothing fancy um, built this a little bit ago I don't have a ton of time with it so less than a year we don't have actually anything no experience growing anything in it yet because it started super late but we do have some stuff growing in here for now that can't be frozen so or at least that we don't want out in the elements I think this is spinach and the the one project that I've taken on is um, heating this this is the one thing I didn't see a ton of when researching grow houses and hoop houses and stuff like that so uh, I took it upon myself to make what is called a rocket mass heater so what you can see here is my take on it it's a smaller scale a lot of people like to build these with uh, 55 gallon drums this is just a typical 30 is it a 30 or 35 gallon trash can just your typical galvanized steel trash can uh, with some brick and some fire brick and there is galvanized piping heat duct piping that goes all throughout here as well this gravel is acting as a as a heat sink and you can kind of see the chimney out through there as well just galvanized nothing's the insulated pipe in reality where I have it passing through the frame I probably should have put an insulated pipe there but it could be something I can revisit later so about this there's tons of tons of plans online as far as making rocket mass heaters tons of information in fact there is so much information that i this is this is actually my second version of this the first one i had it it worked but it was just not as efficient as it could be um and now that it's all together this time around i'm very very happy with this so just regular red brick plus um, fire brick splits that you can get pretty much anywhere. They measure nine by four and a half by an inch and a quarter. And I did have a diamond blade uh, for cutting these on, with a, with my die grinder. You can see some of this refractory mortar is already cracked, so I'm going to have to go through and touch that up. But for the most part, this is what it needs to be. I did have a burn in it last night, so I got some ash in there. I'm not going to clean that out. I'm going to go through actually starting this up and showing you how this all works. Uh, this is essentially a J-tube for those who aren't, in, who aren't familiar. Uh, this is your where you feed the fuel, the wood, also your air intake, and then it's a J. So you can see it goes down and then it goes that way. There's a tunnel that comes up and then there's a chimney built just like this that goes up into here. I think it stops right about here. It's not all the way to the top. You need enough of a gap. And then the can itself acts as a secondary combustion chamber. And then that air um, then exits down there at the bottom. I have an elbow that comes out and then it goes out the chimney. So, and then obviously one of these little uh, heat powered fans that are available on pretty much anywhere uh, to help move the air uh, once it gets going here. So let me, uh, let me plug this in. Actually, before I do that, I'll just go over the wood and everything that I have sitting here for fuel source. So this is just kindling that I have, you know, from the property, just picked it up, snapped it into small sections here. This is all wood from used pallets that I got for free. Uh, cut them in nine inch sections. This is 10 inches from the very top here to the bottom. So I left a little bit of a gap in case there's ash or coals already in there. Um, and still, so I can still put the lid back on it to limit the airflow. And to slow down the burn so that is all um, pallet wood so it's cheap dry crappy wood to burns fast uh, it gets go it gets pretty hot but it burns fast which gets the fire going for me to then be able to add larger stuff later now, I just trimmed up some of these these is this is actually if it looks funky to you it's because well it kind of is funky this is box elder maple that I got from my neighbor uh, he had his tree taken down I turned it all into firewood because I could get no buyers for it Unfortunately, it's very, very pretty wood, but um, 
Well, now it's firewood. Nobody wanted it, so it's only worth what someone is going to pay for it. <laughs> so uh, it doesn't have a super high BTU. I have some ash, but I like to keep that for the house wood stove. Um, so we'll, we'll see what I use going forward here. But my, uh, my next kind of experimentation here is to try to get a longer burn out of this. This stove design burns very, very efficiently, very quickly, and uh, usually uses about a I think most people, all they, all everything that I read said that you know people who heat their houses with these go through about uh, a, they use about a tenth of the amount of wood to heat the same space as with a traditional wood stove. So um, very very efficient, um, but I need to find a way to slow this down because my the whole point of having this out here is to heat the greenhouse, not use electricity if I don't have to, and. Um, which I do have a heater, which I'm going to experiment with tonight to see how long that runs um, after this to see if we can keep the hoop house, grow house. I'm calling it a grow house because it's not a hoop house. It's not a greenhouse, so it's a it's a grow house. Um, to keep it a, about 40 degrees or higher, essentially just keeping anything that's in here from freezing. So let's get this started. I'll show you how I get this wood stove going and uh, how it works. So the first thing I have is, you know, just some old papers, um, junk mail, uh, newspaper. I, I, I try to keep a lot of this up for the house because I have a wood stove in the house. So you just want to, you essentially want to toss it into the tunnel. Not too far. Um, I pretty much seem to be throwing it where, just as far as I can still see it, but it, it's at least inside the tunnel. You don't want to do a ton, but this is just to get, uh, you're priming the system at least. This is my understanding from watching other videos and other people what they have to say. And then you still want some up here in the actual chamber. And then just get your small kindling. Make sure it's laying on top of the stuff in the tunnel, as well as... Here in the in the burn ch in the initial chamber here, it's too thick. So this this a lot of this stuff is dead. It's it's been dry out here, uh, laying on the ground for a while. And just go ahead and line it up. Now there will be a little smoke at first um, as you get it going. The trick is not to put too much in there. You want this stuff to ignite and stay lit. You can already see the flame is sucking in. So it's getting uh, the draft from the chimney. Um, it's pulling up. You can hear the already. So. That gets going here, waiting for these to ignite. There is a little bit of a breeze happening here today. Actually, I should have done this before, but looking at my temperature sensor, uh, as of right now, outside the greenhouse, come on, refresh. Well, in here it's saying it's 53 degrees. And outside is 44. So 44.6 outside, 53.2 in here. Um, we're just starting, so as this goes, it's going to get a little bit warmer. So I just wanted to give that as a as a pretext here. Let's see if I can get that on there. It's a really cool app. It's Govi. Uh, the sensors are pretty tiny. They're Bluetooth. Um, they have a decent range from um, from here to my bedroom window. And the house is maybe 30, 30 yards or so. And um, and it, it picks it up as long as I have my, my blinds open. So I'm just going to get this fire going. I you can see I brought it up a little bit f more or forward back into the uh, initial chamber here so I can get the fire going here so I can start adding bigger stuff. As you can see, only a little bit of smoke has come out. 
most of it gets sucked back down in. A lot of people are familiar with um, the solo stoves. They're smokeless stoves that are pretty popular. And actually now the, the fan just started. So that was pretty quick from when we started. A lot of people are familiar with the solo stoves and it uses the same concept of, um, again, not a scientist, uh, <laughs> but it uses the same concept for um, how it uh, has a secondary burn chamber. And actually, I have one of these nice little Amazon uh, temperature sensors. So as of right now, the trash can right there says it's 115. Up top, where the right where the fan is, also 115. I don't have a huge fire going yet, but just that little thing that's going there, um, as it's enough to heat it up that much. Let's get some thinner stuff in here. Some thin dry stuff here, see if I can get this going. Now I will say the only time that the, I will get smoke to come back in here is one, if I put too much in, if, if I fill this too much, it will come back into here, especially at first. Once it's going and there's a good bed of coals down there, um, that's not the case. It will actually, um, it usually won't do that. Uh, second is if, uh, obviously I don't get a fire going and it, it dies out, it'll come up that way. But even then, uh, it usually sucks. If there's enough draft outside, it will, it'll, um, it'll suck, just suck the smoke through. Uh... The other way is if when I when I do have this really going and I have the brick on top here to keep it closed, if I open it too quick, um, I'll get some smoke that will come out and actually some of that will ignite, kind of like you would for a regular wood stove as well. But otherwise, I might get a little trace that comes out, but for the most part, um, it's very, very tiny. It doesn't get too smoky in here unless I screw up. As long as, uh, as, long as I do everything the way it's supposed to go, then I don't really have an issue. All right, now this stuff burns pretty good. So once this stuff gets going, I'll um, bring it back. Now what I have found too is that, so all of this fire brick retains a good amount of heat. See now, it is gonna smoke up through here because I put a piece on too soon into a spot. All right, we'll come back when uh, this is going a little bit better. Got some more wood in there, some, so I just put some fresh stuff in there so it's coming up again. Now, I, I put this uh, this fire brick over top because so I had a good amount of smoke coming in, so what I have found is by putting that over, um, sometimes when you're starting to, it can limit how much you see coming out there, but as soon as I put it back over, you can actually see the smoke getting sucked down, uh, back down in, so um, that's my starter trick right there as far as uh, not getting smoked out inside uh, this grow house because I my my last design uh, version one of this I definitely smoked myself out of here several times pretty pretty bad um, so so I'm glad I found out figured that out to prevent this from being an issue in the future but let's see here we um, now that we're up to temp here or we're going it's a bigger fire now let's check temps uh, right here we're up to 212 degrees right here on top in front of the fan it's also 212. The bricks on top are at 82. Uh, the brick right here at the intake is, well, that's a 65, that's not right. 77, so maybe it's not fully warmed up yet. Inside the chamber, 240. Right above, you can, I don't know if you can see the laser there, it's saying 400 and some degrees. I think a flame is popping up here once in a while, making it hotter, but right around 400 is where that brick is at, which means the tunnel is about 400 as well. The chimney is probably gonna be around 400 as well. Um, so it gets pretty hot. All right, we've been running now for about 20 minutes and it's gone up to about 60 degrees, 59.7 and rising. Um, you can see I added in a piece of the box elder maple. Uh, I just I actually just put that in, and you can see we got a good good burn going there, um, going in sideways. And we'll just drop in another piece. I will say these things do love to be fed. Um, they love to be full. 
and it just gravity feeds it down and just slowly so it doesn't actually burn up side note it can actually burn upward like a traditional campfire if you don't have enough burning down in the actual tunnel if you don't have enough down there it won't pull it then it will burn straight up so that's why it's good to have these you can actually see like i've had i've had flame go up so um so it is good to have uh, at least some sort of cover over the top here. Uh, this is a, f a five inch system, so that means this opening here is five inches, the tunnel is five inches, and the chimney is five inches inside. Now, my chimney going out to outside, that's only four inches diameter. Um, that's what I had at the time. I thought I was making a four inch stove, ended up making a five inch stove, no big deal. Um, the ratios that you're supposed to do here is one to two to four to six and that what that breaks down to is your one is here your opening that's so five inches then your next dimension so one to two is your drop so from the top here down to the bottom of the chamber is going to be ten inches five times two then it's going to be five times four so from this opening to the back side of the chimney is going to be twenty inches and then your chimney height should be times six. So five times six is 30. Now, I couldn't quite get 30 with this trash can. Um, it's not high enough. So I think I'm a, I'm a couple inches shorter, but it's working and it's, it's good enough. But that's, I'm just telling you, that's how it typically works. Let's see what this fire going here. Where are we at? A little bit more air in. Turn this on. Up top here, we're at 280, 280 degrees, at 285. The bricks on top are at 144. Um, trash can here on the side, that's 300. And actually, you can see just by going down here to the base is already, if I go right here at the ceramic, that's 175. So big difference between the top and the bottom. Also, this doesn't like reflective surfaces, so. But I know down here at the very, very bottom, I can actually touch with my hand. It's not hot, but man, within an inch or so, it can get, it gets really hot, so. So that is essentially how you get one of these going. Um, that's how it works. It's pretty simple. What I then do is, um, once I get a good burn going and I have this absolutely full, I will put both bricks on and I will actually shut it all the way and it will burn very efficiently like this. Um, it does slow down, but it burns really well. Um, obviously you want to get it really hot and then you want to slow it down so that it, it lasts and you have a good burn going. So, but that is essentially the ins and outs of my rocket mass heater, rocket stove, whatever you want to call it. It is a there's a couple names for it. It's rocket mass heater. This being the mass. Typically people make it out of what's called cob, uh, which is a mud, sand, and straw mixture. Uh, I just used gravel because it's what I had. It doesn't get super hot, but it does retain a lot of heat and um, it's something's better than nothing. And it's better than just having an exposed pipe as well and just hemorrhaging the heat. Um, but yeah, that's a pretty cool thing. If you have any questions, let me know. If you'd like to see any further information on this or any follow-ups, also let me know. And uh, hope to see you on the next one.